Hello and welcome to a discussion of miscellaneous issues related to the use of long-term assets. After viewing this video, you'll be able to record depreciation expense when the cost of an asset changes and when the estimated useful life or residual value changes. You'll be able to record the gain or loss on the sale of an asset and determine the amount of impairment loss. The cost of using long-term assets in future periods will change when additional costs are incurred that increases probable future economic benefit, or the estimated useful life is revised, or the estimated residual value is revised. When these situations occur, depreciation expense for each future period must be recalculated so that the total net cost of the asset is allocated over the total time the asset is used. Total time consists of all past and future periods. The asset is used to produce revenue. When more costs are added to the original cost of the asset or estimates are revised, the depreciation expense in future years must reflect this change. A revised book value is computed on the date the change occurred. The revised book value and revised estimates are used to compute the depreciation expense going forward for all future periods. The depreciation expense reported in prior years does not change. Let's quickly work through an example of how to compute depreciation when the cost of the asset or related estimates change. In this example, the company purchased a machine and expected to use the machine for 10 years and then sell it. At the beginning of the fourth year, after using it for three years, additional costs were incurred which changed the expected useful life and residual value. The first step is to compute the depreciation expense that was reported for the first three years the asset was used and the balance in the accumulated depreciation account at the end of three years. The cost to rebuild increases future benefit by extending the useful life and this is added to the original cost of the machine at the beginning of year four. The cost of the purchase and the overhaul increases the machine account. Depreciation expense is also added to the contra account, accumulated depreciation, during each of the first three years. The new total cost less total accumulated depreciation to date is used to compute the new revised book value. The revised book value less the new estimated residual value gives the new depreciable cost to use to compute depreciation expense for future years. Annual depreciation expense is recomputed and the company will expense $15,083 each year for the next 12 years. The total expense spread over the total of 15 years the machine is used will be the net depreciable cost of $235,000 computed as the $200,000 original cost plus $45,000 added cost less the $10,000 expected residual value. Long-term assets that are sold or disposed of are removed from the balance sheet. The accumulated depreciation related to the asset that is sold is also removed from the balance sheet. A gain is recorded when cash is received is higher than book value. A loss is recorded when cash received is lower than book value. Let's quickly walk through an example of how to account for the sale of an asset. In this example, the company purchased an auto for a salesman for $35,000. The automobile was expected to be used for five years and then sold for $8,000. Depreciation expense was recorded using the straight line method at the end of each of the first three years. On June 1st of the far fourth year, the auto was sold for $12,000. Complete the first two steps and determine the cash received from the sale and historical cost of the asset sold. Next, compute the depreciation expense for each year the asset was used and the partial year the asset was sold. The automobile is sold in the middle of year four. The expense of using the car for the first five months of year four must be recorded also. Total the accumulated depreciation for the entire time the asset was used. Now that you have all the required information, determine the gain or loss on the sale of the asset. The gain or loss is the difference in the cash received and the book value at the time of the sale.
The journal entry is made using the information gathered. Increase cash for the amount of cash received. Decrease the automobile for the historical cost of the asset. Remove the accumulated depreciation to the date of the sale from the accumulated depreciation account. This journal entry will not balance. Determine the amount of the debit or credit that will balance the entry and record a debit for the loss. All long-term assets must be tested periodically for impairment. Impairment occurs when book value is greater than the probable future economic benefit, or cash flows, of the asset. Book value is the net cost reported on the balance sheet. It is not cost beneficial to test for impairment at the end of every period, so GAAP requires impairment testing only when there are circumstances that indicate the future benefit of the asset may have significantly decreased when it comes to property plant and equipment. Future economic benefit is likely to decrease when the company experiences significant decreases in the market price of goods or services sold, a change of how the asset is used or the asset's physical condition, a significant change in the business environment, current period losses or expected future losses, or a significant decrease in the useful life of the asset. Impairment loss is reported on the income statement as an operating expense because the loss occurs on assets used for operations. GAAP requires that different types of assets you use different methods for determining if impairment has occurred and the value of that impairment. Long-term assets with a finite useful life are tested for impairment using a two-step process. The first step determines if impairment is likely to have occurred, and the second step measures the amount of the impairment. Step 1 tests to determine if the cost is likely to be recovered or if an impairment is likely to have occurred. An impairment loss is likely to have occurred when the undiscounted total estimated future cash flow is less than the asset's book value. If total estimated cash flows are greater than the book value of the asset, there is no impairment loss. If total estimated cash flows are less than the book value of the asset, impairment is likely and step 2 is required to determine the amount. If impairment is likely, the accountant must determine the value of the impairment. The value of the impairment loss is equal to the asset's book value less the fair market value of the asset. Fair market value is the amount the asset could be bought or sold in a current transaction between willing parties, also defined as a quoted market price, an external appraisal, or the discounted present value of future estimated cash flows in a risk-free interest rate. Intangible assets with an indefinite life other than goodwill, <coughs> excuse me, such as purchased research and development, are tested for impairment annually or when circumstances indicate impairment may have occurred. A one-step process is used and the book value of the asset is simply compared to the fair market value of the asset. An impairment loss occurs when book value is greater than fair market value. Goodwill is a different type of asset in that it increases the value obtained from using other tangible assets in a reporting unit. It only exists within another reporting unit and cannot be separated from its specific reporting unit. As such, the value of its reporting unit must be used to test goodwill for impairment. A reporting unit is an operating segment or a component of an operating segment where, dis, where discrete financial information is available and is regularly reviewed by management. Reporting units have separate management and assets used to operate the unit. A different method is used to test goodwill for impairment because goodwill is wrapped up within a specific reporting unit. The first step is to look at value from a total reporting unit perspective and compare the fair market value of the reporting unit to the book value of all the assets in the reporting unit, including goodwill. If this is positive, fair market value is higher and there is no impairment. If this is negative and fair market value is lower, the value of the impairment loss must be computed in Step 2. Step 2 looks only at the value of goodwill. The book value of goodwill is compared to the estimated implied fair market value of the goodwill. 
implied fair market value of goodwill is computed by comparing the fair market value of the reporting unit with the fair market value of all the assets except goodwill. When the book value is higher than fair market value, an impairment loss has occurred. After viewing this video, you should be able to record depreciation expense when the cost of an asset changes or the estimated useful life or residual value changes. You should be able to record the gain or loss on the sale of an asset and determine the amount of impairment loss. Please go to studymyaccounting.com and work through practices you learn for examples of how to apply the concepts and procedures discussed in this video. Then work the practice test. Please write out your answers and check your understanding to the answers provided. Thank you for being prepared for class. It is very much appreciated.